Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we're at Formnext in Germany. We're taking a look at some of the latest and greatest tech in 3D printing. We're talking with some new partners, some old partners, and we're going to chop this up into lots of different videos so that we can try to cover as much as humanly possible. But first of all, let's play a game of jacket, no jacket, because sometimes I'm going to be hot and sometimes I'm not. And it's going to make it really difficult from an editing perspective. <laughs> Let's get in there. Hello guys and dolls, we're here at the Zach's booth taking a look at the Z3S. So, let's talk about Zach's to begin with because you've been in the industry for a while We've but, been in here for like eight years right now. Yep. We first founded in 2015 in Turkey. It started as a small project for Mr. Bake, our CEO. Yeah. Then, time over time, it started, became really popular in Turkey because it was one of the first Wi-Fi printers at that time. Right, okay, yeah. Schools loved it, companies loved it. It became really popular in Turkey. And then we said, why are we only saying this in Turkey? Let's make it global. So we had a, a little bit of a bad timing. We started in COVID time in 2021. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. So we did our first form next boot. Our location wasn't that good, to be honest. But there we started to build our first distribution and reseller network. Yep. We started to be really good. We now have access all around Europe, USA, Middle East. Yep. Which is quite good for us. Yeah. And right now. We are just released our new product, Z3S, which is an update for Z3 actually. Yep. What it does is right now we can achieve prints up to 500 millimeters per second and 3000 millimeter acceleration with high flow filaments, of course. Right now we are printing PET carbon fiber on this one. Right. It's printing with 320 millimeter per second. Okay, speed. so there, there, there's a lot to unpack on that, right? Because yeah. you can't you, we, we, you can't go quicker without creating an awful lot of technical problems for yourselves. So I'm assuming you've got resonance compensation or like an input shaper, input shaper, of input shaper on here, so to, to try and make sure that when you're going at that extra speed, you're able to get rid of artifacts and, and keep yourselves nice and clean. I mean, the, the print quality on this, I mean, and on these parts as well, these are zero post-processing parts you're taking the supports off and you're and, and you're away like these are these are production ready parts right exactly so the, the 500 millimeters a second it's is not this one it's, it's only not with the high flow material right okay fair enough so so when you get the high flow when you get the high flow on so is it a revo high flow you're on there this is ETD Revo high flow right result. okay fair enough so then once you get the high flow on there the 500 millimeters a second is an insanely fast speed yes. like that and with high flow filaments yeah, we, yeah. yeah. so there are obviously conditions to that and there is you being able to you know you're not going to be able to print TPU at that speed and things like that Impossible. but let's so, so let's talk about the specs of this machine then so 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 build volume is 40 30 35 centimeters square right so huge <laughs> to be honest. Right. We have a core XY system for the stability and precision. Yep. Uh, we have an internal camera for AI spaghetti detection because right now we are printing pretty fast with expensive materials. Yes. So we need something to stop the production if anything bad happens. You don't want that filament to go waste. Yep. So let's talk slicer. So are you proprietary slicer or are you open source? What have you got? We used to be open source as we are seeing lots of to lots of companies and there were some failures with the, their users. So we switched to closed slicer. Yep. But we used to have a cross slicer, but our community preferred Prusa slicer. So yep. they wanted Cru Prusa. We say we will give it to you. We are right now Prusa engine based. Right, okay. So it's still your slicer, but a branch off of Prusa. Uh, yes, Prusa we just integrated our farming UI to yeah. Prusa's slicer. So that gives you farming capability, that gives you remote monitoring. Much more customization. Yeah. And you yeah, can yeah, yeah. watch each of your prints in your site screen. Yeah. You can also use our xCloud app on your Apple phones to monitor your prints, right. give your prints, and stop your prints. Excellent. 
So materials. So we're obviously we're doing the regular stuff, the PLAs, the ABSs, the PETGs, and all that kind of thing. But this isn't really targeted at that style of printing, really. Yeah. It's, it's going towards the hotter end. We so are going for PA glass fiber, PET carbon fiber, right. PA carbon fiber. So we're 350, 380 on that? Like, how high on the hot end can you go? We can go up to 300. Up to 300. Okay, fair enough. 320, so, actually. Yeah, and then 120 on the beds, and then any active heating in the chamber? No, or? it's passive heated. Right, okay, fine. Up to 60 degrees. Yep. But filters, so HEPA um, filters. so HEPA filters HEPA for both. Filters. Yep. Excellent. And then, obviously, we're auto leveling. We've got a pinder sensor in of there. Course. So we have two step calibration. First one is the Z tilt. Yep. The other one is the mesh calibration. Yep. So okay. So uh, for guys at home, a lot of um, leveling of beds, auto leveling of beds, isn't that right? <laughs> it is. It is create. It is creating a software mesh that creates a software solution to a hardware problem because your bed isn't level and you don't want to level it for whatever reason. So the probe goes around and it compensates by creating a mesh that offsets, the, uh, that offsets how the tool head moves. When you're dealing with what you'd class more as true calibration, you physically move the Z motors independently after you've probed and that gets, you, and that gets the bed level trams the tool head to the uh, to the site to, to the uh, to the hat head of the build plate and then still does a mesh compensation on top to mean that any imperfections in your build plate are compensated for right exactly. so it's th there is a really big difference between proper bed <laughs> calibration and auto bed leveling so that a lot of the, <laughs> that a lot of so companies too it's automatic in the sense that you don't do anything but it isn't calibration it's like saying the bed is it's two millimeters away here three millimeters here so we now need to move the tool head in a weird way to compensate for the fact that you haven't leveled your bed correctly and on this it is truly automated and it's proper bed leveling right and also we have another interesting feature which is recently updated so, you are a farm user, time is money for you. If you give the print and you want to give it again and again and again, if you are sure with your calibration, you can just cancel the calibration and go directly to the printing. Right, okay, it I will get you. so much time. So, because you're not changing material and you're not changing the, the machine's Nothing parameters changed. haven't changed. It so, the calibration it's just, data inside, so. so, it's rinse and repeat and it makes it quicker for exactly. you to be able to clean up that workflow. Nice. So cloud-based, I mean, obviously this is designed really to go into print farms exactly. and start printing engineering. And you're, you, you're doing all of that cloud printing through your, through, through your slicer. Exactly. Brilliant. Well, look, I mean, it's obviously one of the, one of the good looking machines at the show. <laughs> it has nice lights in it and I like that. <laughs> uh, it's also doing some crazy engineering grade materials. This isn't the only machine that, they've, that you've got at the show. This is just sort of the flagship machine. We'll do some panning shots in a minute and show the, the other machines we've, that you guys have got in the lineup. Um, you've got sort of, you've got, I know you've got an IDEX and you've got sort of more desktop grade machines for perhaps a little bit more prosumer, consumer um, type of people. What's the price tag on something like this? For this one right here is 3,900 euros. Okay, so let's, I mean, let's be clear about how genuinely cheap that is compared to competitors in the marketplace, exactly. right? So if we're talking about something that can do this kind of filament, we're talking about really a raise three pro or maybe a raise two with a modified hot end, which is five and a half. A Before, bit more than that. Yeah, like if you like, want to get the speed addition to it too, you yeah, know, you can the normally speed pin kit. slow. Yeah. So and you're still not gonna get the speeds that this gets. I mean even with their even with their upgraded hot end kit, I think they're still only doing 350, something like that, 350, 400. So you're yes. you're you're pushing boundaries past that anyway. So when you're dealing with machines like this, it's about return on investment, right? This is this is not a machine designed to be sitting here printing Pokemon characters and little bits and pieces. This is a professional grade machine that's going to earn you money. So it's about how quickly from when I buy this machine, does it pay for itself? Does it start making me money? And what's the return on investment for me putting that money in? So lower price point, higher throughput means that your return on investment window shrinks and shrinks and shrinks until this machine pays for itself really really quickly so thanks very much for taking the time Always. it was a pleasure thank you very much you guys. catch you on the next video bye bye see you later